Orb presents a very venture Halloween. My name is Gary Butterfield. My name is Cole Ross. And uh, welcome to Halloween. Boo! This is Halloween. Yeah. I, I, I don't like the Nightmare Before Christmas, but there's a song in the Binding of Isaac expansion that's the exact same melody. Oh. Huh. It's very distracting. That is <laughs> that, <laughs> that is very distracting. Anything that would re- remind me of that. I didn't realize that like, that wasn't directed by uh, uh, Johnny Depp. What's what's his name? Tim Burton. By Tim Burton. He just produced it. That was directed by the guy who directed Monkey Bone. I, I knew it had Monkey Bone DNA, but I thought that <laughs> Tim Burton, I thought he directed Nightmare Before Christmas and produced Monkey Bone. Uh, I, I, I believe it. Uh, yeah, I, I believe that Nightmare Before Christmas was just a, uh, was just a, a for, for, from, the, from the mind of. Yeah, you, uh, uh, Greg Turkington teaches us that if, uh, that's a big mistake. Mm-hmm. Like if Johnny Depp's going to be in it, you got to get Tim Burton to direct. Oh, yeah. And I mean, vice versa. Yeah, I mean, why don't you split uh, up that classic pair? Yeah, that, that that would that that would immediately lose it a bag of popcorn. But you got to give them five for the effort. Yeah, five for the effort, and then uh, a tiny little monkey bone. <laughs> just a uh, tiny bit. Brendan Fraser, out. because it's good to see him see him getting back on the scene. Yeah, everyone yeah. loves him now. He got he got. Uh, yeah, everyone loves them. And not not to be um, completely off of this, but is so from 2001 to 2009, that director didn't direct anything. Uh, but okay. d- is there a wider swing in quality than this? 2001, do a monkey bone, right? Sure. Do uh, a monkey bone like I do it down at the skate park. Right. And then 2009, Coraline. Coraline. Oh, huh. Yeah, I mean, he spent those eight years training. There was a montage. <laughs> <laughs> he was in the gym making small movies yeah. over and over and over. <laughs> I, I think that Coraline, uh, the big reason why Coraline, uh, Leica Studios is a big reason why Coraline is good. Mm-hmm. Not to rep too much home, hometown pride. And oh, yeah. it's not my hometown. <laughs> Leica Studios based out of DeKalb, Illinois. Right, right. <laughs> it's all corn dolls and like. <laughs> um, we're talking about the Halloween special. We are. Uh, which is only kind of a special. Only kind of. Uh, it is meant to fit in continuity. This was written by Doc Hammer, uh, and it first aired mm-hmm. October 28th of 2012, well before the season five premiere, though it was meant to yep. air afterward. It should be episode two. Yes. Uh, but they wanted to throw the fans a bone because, as we talked about in the Venture Brothers, uh, there's long waits between seasons. Mm-hmm. And the 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 uh, premiere of season five was delayed slightly, so it was like, yes, all right, we could wait another year to show this stuff, or we can uh, swing in with this thing, you know? Yeah, uh, and it's you know, kind of fun. Mm-hmm. Uh, the uh, plot happens here. It's not like a special, like this this you know, <laughs> mandatory things happen here. Yep. Uh, specifically, Dean finding out he's a clone. Yep. Um, it's a big deal. It's going to be the he's going to hint around it all season. Yes. Um, the same way that like, if you just were watching the seasons, if you're just searching, you'd miss gar- uh, all that in Gargantua too. Right. Which right. Is, would be a bewildering nightmare. Oh yeah. Well, why are they in New York now? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is, this has a similar feeling like this is mandatory, mm-hmm. but it's a special because of weird adult swim politics and stuff. Yes. It's not politics, but just air date. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. So if you're, uh, if you're, if you're watching this on DVDs, uh, this will be hidden away in the special features and uh, Hammer and Public do not like that that is the case because it's probably one of the last things you will watch. Um, yeah. Thankfully, if you're watching this on Hulu uh, or I imagine any other service where this is available, uh, it is just presented as the first episode of season five, which is still weird, but it is not as weird and wrong as it could be. Yeah, it ends up making a weird uh, premiere. Yes. Um, there's a B-plot here with Dr. Orpheus uh, putting together the Brimstone Assembly. Uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. I like that B-plot quite a bit. Yep. Um, there, there are more jokes in it, and it, it's pretty fun. Yes. Um, so there's a character who shows up here, uh, this character named Ben, um, who delivers this exposition bomb. Yes. Uh, that Dean is a clone. Um, he was a colleague of Jonas, who mm-hmm. lives on the venture property uh, down in the Potter's Field? <laughs> um, he never shows up again. Nope. Uh, you know, and it's probably because J.K. Simmons is expensive just to have as a 
you know yeah show up every once in a while like orpheus yeah to be to to, to be incident incidental uh like that and jk simmons does a very good job it is not like uh, overtly jk simmons it is not the cartoon version of jk simmons you might be expecting you know from j mm-hmm. jonah jameson and such like that but it's it's really well done like he he, he embodies a character it's it's great. He's incredible. Yeah. Like how how good is J.K. Simmons? I almost want to watch Oz, uh-huh. even though I know that he shits on someone or is shit upon. <laughs> in that, I can't remember. And either uh, of them he's would involved be involved in a a non consensual shitting. <laughs> either of them would be unacceptable for different reasons. Yeah. Yeah. But I I just like him as a just an actor in a law in a long running drama is interesting to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like J.K. Simmons. Oh, he's great. He's, and like, he's very good. He's like uh, the best part of the Lady Killers, that mm-hmm. intolerable shitbag, <laughs> like a horrible movie. Oh my gosh. Um, uh, Burn After Reading, uh, the, the, yeah. the, the ending of Burn After Reading. It's like, so what do we learn here? <laughs> yeah. Very good. He's, he's just a very funny man. Yeah. Yeah. And like, yeah. I'm, I'm a huge dork for this, but like, I really enjoy hearing that a talented, famous person is like nice and professional and cool to be around and good to, good to work with. That just gives me really good vibes. And apparently just yeah. like, so they asked a bunch of people and they, they turned it down and then they asked JK Simmons just as like this lark. And he said, Oh yeah, sure. And like, well, we would have asked you yeah. first because <laughs> this is a, this is a dream. Uh, and then it was just, it came in, no ego took direction well and was just super pleasant. Yeah. The, uh, yeah, it's very sweet. Mm-hmm. You know, um, there's a cute little anecdote in the book where, uh, doc was really happy because, uh, he played portal two and mm-hmm. he knows JK Simmons from portal two. He, of course he does a great performance in that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's very sweet. Uh, and the commentary on this has some, is, is a little bit weird. I think that they think that it's a worse episode than it really is. Yeah. Um, it's not very funny. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of interesting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's this, one of those weird episodes where i'm like i want to see what happens next uh-huh. but not because of action and not because of jokes right um you know it has it has a rare uh a lot of times in the book doc will punch up jackson stuff mm-hmm. and kind of critique it. it has a rare instance of jackson critiquing doc stuff yeah. like how i would have done it differently uh doc badmouths halloween a lot which is it, which i'm shocked but like that guy seems like he'd be <laughs> right in the pocket for halloween yeah yeah i I, like so i don't remember him like bad mouthing halloween itself it's just that he had bad experiences on halloween like he never had the he never had the you know mischief night kind of thing it was just the 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 bullies would bully and prank him he he talked about um having to do a halloween episode and that like who cares about halloween or something like that oh yeah i I, I can't like there's limitless possibilities the halloween (laughs) episode is like regularly the most fun episode of most tv shows Mm -hmm. simpsons roseanne (laughs) <laughs> other shows from the 90s yeah. like it, the halloween episode is the good one the yeah. office all those halloween episodes are classics yeah you know yeah and, and and, just, uh, yeah it, i was very surprised yeah and just uh just like especially the idea of like a halloween you know like a halloween special right i think that he he probably is getting it conflated like it is a weird one to do like a special but his conception of a special you know is like kind peanuts of, yeah is what he pumpkin yeah, is, is, is what he was aiming for with this, which is to make it kind of sappy, to make it a bit sentimental. And I like what he what he kind of landed on, uh, you know, for kind of the emotional core of this, even if it is, you know, kind of forced in diagonally, you know? Yeah, yeah, it's a uh, yes. And the emotional core of this is is good and sweet, uh, even if it is just very tacked on. Yes. You know, but then the, it, it ends up providing attention to the special because it's not the kind of show they can just show as a standalone. You know, they mm-hmm. brought to talk about this in the book as well. It's not like the great pumpkin. Right. Where like, Hey, it's Halloween. Let's bring out the venture brothers mm-hmm. Halloween special. And it's fully half of the episode is just about moving the macro plot forward. Yes. Um, pretty silly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, we talked about, uh, last episode about how Titmouse uh, is now doing the animation. Mm-hmm. They have an editor. So, so doc Hammer no longer has to edit. Uh, you know, I did not notice a difference or anything like that. Um, that's not to impugn him or Titmouse. Right, it just, uh, right. they both see, you know, I'm sure that was a relief for him. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Uh, there's a big difference. I mean, this is, uh, you know, the first properly animated episode by Titmouse. And I think the, the, the biggest visual departure that we've had since the beginning of what season three, 
right? The well, certainly a visual department. I meant in the editing specifically. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I was. Yeah, the, 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 this the, the, this is an and uh, instead of instead of a but. Yeah, no. Just just say additionally, like this this also looks really good. In addition to being animated super well, like the um uh, just the the, the coloring. And everything in mm-hmm. this is actually really good. It is like nice and spooky. Lots of good scenes. It just has a very distinctive look, uh, even compared to other stuff that would come later. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's get into it. Let's do. Uh, I love this the, the, this montage. The opening, <laughs> the mm-hmm. opening with the boys' haunted bedrooms. Right. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it, them doing this over and over. This is very cute. <laughs> you know uh the uh so it has uh you know dean is always playing as kind of the, the shock character and then hank is the host yep you know uh he comes up dresses renfield offering them a glass of blood uh, which is ketchup and pepsi which inspires the hunchback mm-hmm. uh later the drink uh which again this show people who are listening to this if you like this show Make it big so eventually Cole and I end up doing docktails on stream or something. <laughs> like I, I it's making me gag thinking about ketchup and bourbon right now. Oh, awful. <laughs> awful. You yeah. Know? But uh I, I'd do it. I don't know. Yeah, I I taste it. I wouldn't drink a whole cup of it. <laughs> no. No, no, you you'd literally be sick. Like our body, our aging bodies are not made for that. <laughs> nope. But yeah, like just like creme de menthe with a splash of Kahlua or whatever. Like I'll I'll do I'll do Whoa. some docktails. <laughs> 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 oh man uh but uh you know we, 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 the, the kind of the the repetitive joke here what they're setting up it's impossible to scare rusty right because it is true you know tra- tra- traumatic childhood and also brock is just kind of yeah you know, here I, I, it's funny how they don't even like pretend you know like indulge yeah. him you know dean wakes up from his bed i am dracula and does like the whole thing and it's just okay let's let's just get on with our night yeah, uh, this this culminates in them coming in and seeing the boys crushed by a fallen shelf and there's blood <laughs> everywhere. And I just uh, Brock, go get some water ammonia. I'm going to go heat up the slugs <laughs> like, <laughs> thinking they just the other kid just died. Yeah. To a shelf accident again. <laughs> um, the uh, you know, very cute uh, present day. Uh, he comes in. Uh, Rusty's like, you're not going to try anything. He's like, no, we're over that. That's baby stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, he opens up one of Rusty's emails. He's like, what is this? Malignant melanoma? Melanoma? No. <laughs> melanoma? Yeah. And then Dean screams for the bathroom saying it burns when he when he pees. He shouldn't have trusted her. Yeah. And Hatred uh, hatred walks in and it's like, oh, we got water coming all throughout the ceiling in the kitchen. When was the last time he had the plumbing done here? So th- throwing down a triple, uh, you know, you know, all of this landing at yeah, once. Adult fears. Yeah. Can't. Can- cancer diagnosis your kid getting vd uh and you know just a just a huge uh huge pain painful expensive repair um and yeah like he's like oh my gosh i can't believe this you got to be kidding me and boo they actually did it like this is the stuff that got them very cute yeah uh we get a uh, bespoke opening credits mm-hmm. with with zombie uh henchmen chasing the boys and stuff it's it's very cute mm-hmm. uh and we cut over to orpheus telling rusty about his gathering uh, he's going to have his party. Yes. Um, the Brimstone Assembly. Uh, and Rusty is nonplussed. He's, he's just, you know, just make sure everyone parks outside the gate. It'll be fine. As mm-hmm. long as it's not too disruptive. Yeah. Which, like, what are you doing, man? <laughs> like, yeah. yeah. Come on. Horrible landlord Rusty is. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dermot walks in. He just kind of barges into the kitchen. Uh, and he's dressed up as the crow. Uh, and, yeah. uh, he, he does that this is, this is a little clever for, 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 for Dermot. He asks Orpheus why, why he isn't dressed in like sweats and a tank top or whatever. And Orpheus doesn't get it, but you know, obviously somebody who dresses like a Dracula every day, uh, would just dress up yeah. like a schlub, right? Yeah. He, of course, everything is opposite day rules. Yes. <laughs> the, uh, Rusty tells Dermot to go out and ring the doorbell. Uh, and he insists, uh, <laughs> Orpheus says, aren't you being a little hard on the boy? And he goes, I have my reasons. Uh, cause this is after he found out that it's his son. Yep. You know, he is, he is, uh, disciplining him. Yes. Uh, <laughs> just, it's very funny. Uh, James Urbaniak's delivery on that. Like he doesn't even like, he doesn't cave when Dermot's like, Oh, come on, man. It's just very straightforward, yeah. very firm backed. Go outside and ring the doorbell. <laughs> Yeah, that kind of I I had a friend whose dad was that kind of guy. Ooh. Uh it was the fucking worst. Mm-hmm. Like uh he uh he would always yell at us for touching the walls. Oh, come which on. is a real weird thing, yeah. you know, cuz I don't know, I'm in the room. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's not like my hands are caked in shit. I was a kid. Yeah. So they weren't like, you know, pre- I wouldn't eat off of my hands, you know, uh-huh. I regularly did. No, but no. I, I wasn't leaving like fingerprints. 
And it's like, well, no, the, like the, the, the use better paint, dude. You, you don't use flat yeah. paint on everything. You gotta, you gotta use uh, eggshell so you can, you know, wash it every once in a while. Come on. What didn't, I, I, what didn't even leave a mark. Like I remember right. him telling me that and then me going into a room where he wasn't and then like touching the wall and being like, you can't even fucking see it. And then, uh, he put us to work one time paying us $5 an hour to put up insulation in his garage. Oh my God. And, uh, he, we, he'd be telling us what to do, instructing us. And I put my hands in, in my pockets and he literally was like, take your dick beaters out of your pockets. They belong to me now. Oh my God. Or some, some shit like that. It was the worst. What that that guy was. He, it was wild. He uh, he died. Cool. Uh, and my last memory of him, I've told this story before, but my last memory of him was driving drunk back from a, a nude, like a Miss Wisconsin nude contest, telling us that if you wrap your a dollar around your hand, you can grab a stripper's boob because the dollar's touching them. You're not. Oh, wow. Final memory of this dude. <laughs> like. Just uh, uh, not to talk shit about my friend's dad. Like, no, you know, they no. Love each other. Com- he's complicated. I get it. But my experience with him, like I grew grew up with him. Like he was, you know, my best friend's dad. Right. Growing up, so like I feel like I'm entitled to have a weird experience uh-huh. with that guy. Uh, and that was the weird experience. Yeah. I'll it, never get that. Like, get your dick beaters out of your pockets. They belong to me <laughs> out of my head. I mean, just, I mean, and anybody who tries to like lay out strip club technicality is on you. Like he's it's the combination yeah. between game pro and hustler. Come on, dude. Yes. And by, by that time we were not, you know, it wasn't during the putting up insulation for $5 an hour. Right. You know, right. times like we were like, I was like 18 uh-huh. or 19, you know, I was an adult. I could legally go to a strip club. Right. But right. I, it still wasn't good for me to sex assault women. No, I, I don't know. Using the, I'm not touching you rules of Miss <laughs> nude, Wisconsin, <laughs> like using Wisconsin law. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, it's very bizarre. But anyway, that, that's what, that's what the go outside and ring the doorbell thing reminds me of. Right. Like that's the kind of shit he would do. Yeah. Uh, yeah. so Hank and very <laughs> condescending and yeah, horrible. Yeah. So he goes around to the front door and Hank and Dean answer and Hank is furious. Uh, you know, like mm-hmm. you said, the costumes were for little kids and you show up dressed like an enchanted mime. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dermot says it's not a costume. It's a disguise. He's covering for it. Kids like dressing up. Yeah. Um, Dean comes out. This is, you know, goth moody Dean with mm-hmm. his, with his dark speed suit. <laughs> You know, he's going to go with them, but he's not going to put on a costume. He'll take his chances. Yeah. Uh, Dean, as a mopey teen this uh, season, I like a lot narratively. Mm-hmm. It takes a lot of the fun out of Dean. It does. Uh, we, we, we've we lost fun Dean. Yeah. Like, kind of for the rest of the show. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, it's, it's, it's like a good character beat. Mm-hmm. But I miss, you know, Dean E.V. Like, I, I miss the enthusiasm a lot. Yeah. I, I like I, that the character changes, but... It, yeah, I yeah. miss I miss Corny Dean, and it puts a puts yeah. a lot of the a uh, lot of the onus uh, for being naive uh, onto uh, onto Hank, and kind of makes Hank a little bit. I mean, slightly more one dimensional, you know. Yeah, in, Hank, in Hank, this is a big idiot season for Hank. Yes, yeah. They they figure out cool stuff to do with him in season six, but yeah, it's a yeah. it's a whole thing. Uh, speaking of being uh, being an idiot naive, says, all right, I'm going to whip something up. He puts on a garbage bag, says, I'm a big bag of Hank. Uh, Dermot, raises, bag of Hank. <laughs> Dermot raises uh, an objection to this. And so he puts on some novelty sunglasses and he's a California raisin. Uh, love yep. the resourcefulness of a naive Hank. Oh, very cute. Uh, so Al is very uh, excited that they're hosting a party. Al loves to party. Mm-hmm. But Orpheus is like, no, this is solemn. Um, and he's like, okay, it's so solemn. How do I arrange the, you know, the, the crudite, uh, things, um, Jefferson twilight painting a sigil on the floor. Um, you know, he's like, do I put a star in the middle? And he's like, no, no, no. You know, what we do is we do a, a, a square to represent unity, a circle to represent divinity and a triangle to represent simplicity. Mm-hmm. This is not the craft. He's like, well, a simplicity would be a star. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, and then, uh, maybe my favorite, uh, other than the the Cenobite with the toaster face, yep. <laughs> like individual favorite moment of this episode is all of the stuff with Red Mantle and Dragoon. Yep, uh, that's very. All this stuff is very good. Red Mantle and Dragoon, <laughs> extremely good. Yeah. yeah. So so the doorbell rings and it's Red Mantle and Dragoon. You know, again, two heads on one body. Uh, but uh, yep. Dragoon has a, a black face. He's in blackface. 
Uh, he's got, yep. got got brown 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 makeup on, and Jefferson obviously is 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 nonplussed. Like face that, that that sucks. And Dragoon tries to say, "Well, you got white paint on your face, so it's okay when you do it." The, the shitty the the shitty defense is blackface, yes. and and it turns out that this isn't just like them being shit. Well, it's it's shitty, yes, but also uh, Dragoon. <laughs> you know, a real weird move. It was just them being shitty. <laughs> like, it's, I, like... I, it's not a costume. I'm just gonna show up to like the store in blackface. <laughs> <laughs> and just to do like, hey, these beloved characters, uh, why don't yeah. we make just one of them extremely racist? Yeah. yeah. We just decided to pivot Dragoon into racism. The hatred it, stuff wasn't shocking people anymore. <laughs> Jeez. So. Um, and I like this because this comes from a uh, fr- from a tension between them. Red Mantle, he's a sorcerer. He gets uh, his power from the uh, from the red cloak that he wears, right? But Dragoon, mm-hmm. like, he's devout. He calls all of them yeah, blasphemers. Yeah. He only agreed to go because of the costume party, and he did blackface because he was going as a costume of the thing with two heads. Yeah. Um, I watched uh, here in town back in the before times. They used to do a thing at our science industry museum called um, it was like real film or something like that, uh, and they would do they would show a movie and then they would have an essay. They'd mm-hmm. take a professor or somebody from local local around the area and do an essay on the subject matter. And I watched a really good uh, showing of Get Out with an essay about uh, how black bodies are used in horror. Mm-hmm. And they showed a lot of the thing with two heads, which yeah. is a movie about a white racist who gets a black guy's head sewed on to him. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have not seen that movie, but that sounds wild. Yeah. And I would like to see it. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> but that, that is, there's a real deep cut. Extremely. Uh, for this. Yeah. Like a 1972 movie. Yeah. so um um, yeah so uh, they're gonna be here and uh uh, dragoon is just not gonna be happy by anything that he sees going on here this is this is his worst nightmare kind of um yeah he's just gonna yell at everybody and call them blasphemers the whole time yes uh so dermot you know he's got his tools uh he says hey let's get ready for project mayhem uh, he's got all of his supplies. He's got rotten eggs that he, that he buried in the yard for a while. He's got shaving cream and stuff. Yeah. The, the stretch is like when they talk about this not having any jokes, mm-hmm. like this is just an expositional like stretch that feels like it goes on for a long time and it just moves things along yeah. with no jokes. Yeah. It's real weird. Like he's like, I got these supplies. Hank's like, well, I got a better idea. What if we stayed, spent the night in a real haunted house? And it, it's very like for either of the writers of the show, it's pretty flat. Mm hmm. Like Dean is just like, do you mean the old man hot Potter's house? Dad told us not to go there. Yeah. And it's like, come on, you got to do it. I don't know. I'm not a chicken. Like it, it feels like it could belong to any show. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's so rare for this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, but it's very flat. Yeah. It's like, just exceptionally mo- flat scene. Moving them in, in, in a very straight line uh, to get, to yeah. get the people where, where they need to be. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have uh, have people like do shit to your house, uh, like like prank Mm-mm. it? No, no. Yeah. Other than the great Snoopy mystery, the, which I talked about, but that's not the, Halloween related. The, the great what mystery? The great Snoopy. I told you, I've told that story many times. Where the the person tore open the, the carnival Snoopy. Oh, on the air. yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. I realized it was on a show, so you don't remember it. I, <laughs> for, for the sake of the listeners, I won't repeat it because I think I've told it like ten times. Yeah. But yeah. the uh, that's the only time that happened. It was on Halloween related. Hmm. Somebody ruined the siding of my house by uh, by spraying uh, like Hershey's chocolate syrup up and down it, uh, which was fun. Uh, they're, they're like their insurance had to cover it and stuff. It was a whole thing. Uh, and then, Does it uh, corrupt? Does no. chocolate syrup not just wash off? Uh, so it's so it's stained it's stained really deeply and then they brought out um pressure washers and uh they did it up and down but like it just uh looked like somebody had scribbled up and down uh, uh like kind of the entire thing yeah it was a whole uh it, yeah it just it, it was completely ruined and like warped and stuff uh it, it, it yeah. the, the the chocolate syrup had uh, had set in uh, also the, uh, the, the morning of my, uh, my high school graduation, this happened to a bunch of people. So it wasn't me b- being singled out, but, uh, somebody, uh, did the prank where you put shaving cream on somebody's, uh, windshield. Uh, I think, okay, sure. well just shaving cream, whatever. I'll just, uh, activate, I'll just activate the, uh, the windshield wipers. They had Vaseline the windshield wipers. Uh, (laughs) and so so it was like oh my god i have no i have no time for this i've got to like vaseline takes forever to clean off the glass it was like okay that's really good that's pretty good yeah it it probably should surprise no one like and i assume i I speak for you as well but maybe not Uh, i wasn't like a go do pranks 
kid. Yeah. On Halloween. Like I wasn't throwing eggs at houses. No, no. You know, I wasn't like worried about being a good boy. I also, I just didn't have the malice. Yeah. It's, it it kind of seemed like a lot of trouble, honestly. Yeah. And just, you know, getting caught wouldn't be worth it. And then Mm -hmm. like hucking an egg feels good. I'm not going to lie. You know, it's got a nice weight to it, but not so much that, uh, you know, I don't need a special night for that. No, no. I can just, you can just huck an egg at something that's not going to stain, yeah. you know? I like to huck them into the garbage. <laughs> yeah. I like, like to <laughs> huck them into yeah. a, huck them into a frying pan in the morning. Hey. Yeah. I huck them into a, into a starving person's mouth <laughs> <laughs> and that's how I make a difference. <laughs> but you're not ready to have that conversation yet. And nope. I vote. <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's the tweet. Uh, yeah. and that's the tweet. <laughs> So, uh, saying like, Hey, let's go, uh, let, let's go stay in this haunted house. Uh, old man Potter's house. They say their dad yeah. tells them not to go there and they go Dean into going along by, uh, uh, Hank and, uh, Hank and Dermot doing a go team venture. Yeah. Uh, they cut back to the, we cut back to the compound. Uh, hatred has all these king size candy bars mm-hmm. in a bowl. Um, this, this is a, a minor point, but the, I don't like XBs in a, a show. XBs. I understand why they happen. But I, I always it always takes me out of the things like a Snickers bar with all the logo, but it's called Snackers or something like oh, that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the let, let, Let's Potato Chips. Yeah. Yeah. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> it, just, it feels it's like simultaneously like kind of clever, clever, mm-hmm. but also uh, just distracting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Rusty, of course, is a cheap ass. You know, we hand out fun size bars here. It's <laughs> <which is> very <laughs> funny. And hatred says, you know, to get to the door, they have to go through like several like trip wires and laser turrets and stuff. If they make it here, they've earned all the candy in the world. Yeah. They're, they're also 15 oh. miles from the nearest neighbor. <laughs> like, yeah. It's so good. <laughs> um, uh, and they get a trick or treater uh, mm-hmm. seemingly proving his point, but turns out it just uh, Pete and Billy uh, Pete dressed up as Ziggy Stardust. He's the thinner, whiter Duke mm-hmm. and Billy dressed up as Rusty Venture. And this is very cute. There's a really great line delivery here where they're like, they try to send him away and they're just like, we want to hang out with you guys. Mm-hmm. Like, it's very sweet that Billy just wants to party. Yeah. With yeah. Them. Just, 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 just looking for a place to spend the evening, you know, and they, and they yeah. turn it into a party, although it is betting on the fate of children. <laughs> yeah a lot of dead kids at this party um but it, it but it is real cute yeah uh yeah <laughs> so yeah. back over at orpheus's dragoon goes to get more punch uh but red mantle tells him no you can't hold your liquor uh you always throw up i uh, love this line last time i saw a license plate come out it's like we were gutting a tiger shark yeah very <laughs> cute uh, the outrider talks to Al about the, uh, the rumor about, uh, Marilyn Manson having his ribs removed so he could be a sex offender or so he could you know, suck his own cock. <laughs> it, 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 yeah. un- unrelated, uh, yeah. lo- loosely related, let's say. Um, yeah. and Al says, yeah. oh, I thought it was Cher that did that. And I, I just, I, I love this because they don't really underline it except, to, uh, to put a look on Tatiana's face on, a on the Outrider's wife's face. Because the Outrider's like, wait, why would she need to bend down? She doesn't have a, like, yeah. <laughs> so implying that yep. he is unaware of the notion of performing oral sex on a woman. <laughs> it, it's a, I mean, you, I feel like you'd have to get all your ribs removed. Yeah, I mean, you know. To, like, eat yourself out. Yeah. That's a, that's a ribless thing. You had to get be, go full no torso. Like, oh, yeah. your arms just come out of your hips. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> uh yeah, Orpheus calls everyone's attention. You know, the veil is thin. It's time for the festivities to begin. Uh, and everyone, the whole point of the Brimstone Society, I like how they don't, uh, the Brimstone Assembly, is they don't really say it, but everyone just does a does a magic uh-huh. act to kind of show off. Uh, here, it's real cute. Uh, yeah. this, this seems like this would be like the most fun in the world. Um, <laughs> I love the crew here as well. There's several like background characters we've seen as uh, before, including the uh, the old sorcerer from Big Trouble in Little China is here. Uh, yeah, a little time. Like. Yeah. Yeah, low pants here. Um, and then just like a bunch of, of people they've shown as magic mm-hmm. characters. Uh, yeah. Curse gets a, and whenever Curse shows up, I'm happy. <laughs> um, Orpheus and Jefferson, little callback. They do stiff as a board, light as a feather, stiff as a board. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you, you call back to uh, Alchemist complaining, and don't you remember how light as a feather and stiff as a board <laughs> Jefferson Twilight was? Um, here, uh-huh. And everyone loves it. Oh, yeah. Just say I love how crazy they are about this slumber party trick. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
back out uh back outside the boys are looking at old man potter's house it's this uh spooky house that's on the property and dermot says hey uh you know since you guys since you guys own it richie rich you should go there and you know dean should go first because he's insisting that he's not scared yeah yeah. Uh, and, uh, he just decides to go, you know, Dermot's like, is that, is he being brave or stupid? And Hank's like, he just wants to be alone. Yeah. Uh, here, um, he comes in, it looks like a haunted house. There's taxidermy and cobwebs and stuff. And as he tries to leave, this little homunculus jumps <laughs> up and tackles him. Um, this is, you know, this is, would be our, our commercial break here. Yeah. Um, when he wakes up, he's on an operating table, um, with this, uh, you know, older man, mm-hmm. uh, with, with a beard, like old white beard, yeah. uh, wearing a robe and boxers um doing a medical exam on him uh calling out these different features he has um this is all actual medical stuff See? uh he's calling out about cloning yep uh and stuff this is another one of those like the boys do a lot of research mm-hmm. bits uh and then uh the little homunculus is just snorfling <laughs> dean's balls we do not smell uh, balls rico <laughs> yeah, it's going to town on them shits yeah uh yeah. So this this is our, our little uh dun dun dun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Uh back at the party, uh Curse, who uh I believe it's Orpheus accidentally calls him Chris. Uh yeah, if he's <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh fails at doing a conjuring. Um and uh Dragoon uh, calls him a blasphemer. This is the first time we see this. Uh, and then Red Mantle and Dragoon go up to do their own. Yeah. Uh they're like, we're gonna hold a uh pull a rabbit out of a, a hat. You know, uh, Jefferson asks if they're just going to do a minstrel show. And they're just like, well, what's so cool about that? He's like, no, we're actually going to do it. It's really hard. You know, like, it's not a, it, it is hard to do. Mm-hmm. The uh, Red Mantle's like, you know, it's really hard. Dragon says that's what she said. He's like, no one said that. <laughs> that is not what uh, she said. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so we go back uh, the in Venture, uh, the compound, um, security lasers scare off some trick or treaters, and Rusty and the other are in the security room taking making bets. Yes, at point <laughs> making bets on how um, far they're get. Like who who had the fountain? <laughs> Pete uh, asks, "What's up with the drinks?" And this is where we get the reveal of the hunchback, yes. the ketchup and bourbon cocktail. Oh God, with nothing else to really? like, no, nothing else to sweeten it. Like ketchup is sweet, yeah. but like not enough. No, no, no liquid. I mean, best case scenario, it would taste just like tomato juice, like being Ugh. thinned out by the bourbon. But you'd have to add a lot of bourbon to thin it out. Yeah. Like the viscosity is a real problem. It really would like, and how like, I, I don't imagine that it would that would, that it would like emulsify especially well or dissolve. Mm-hmm. All I can picture yeah. is like the like the the solids of the of the ketchup sitting at the bottom is is, yeah. is what it would is is what I think it would do because alcohol yeah, would be lighter. With a ketchup-y aftertaste. Oh man! Yeah. When, when it, just them stumbling upon a character trait, uh, <laughs> Doc being into these foul cocktails is one of my favorite. <laughs> things it's such a good touch <laughs> um and just every callback is very it's very good mm-hmm. to me yeah uh so dermot and hank are talking about the important things such as uh what the best part of Chex mix is um mm-hmm. and hank expresses worries and like hey dean's been in there for a while uh we should probably go get him and dermot says no D- dermot's scared yeah 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 uh dean wakes up and the, the man introduces himself He's like, ah, oh, Dean, you're such a lightweight for staying out so long. I just want to hit a horror for him. Um, here he's like, I'm Ben. You mm-hmm. know, uh, I know you. I've been watching your kids since you were born. You know, and each time after, uh, and there's some confusion. Like, Dean's not a prisoner. Mm-hmm. You know, he he can leave. Uh, he's not Potter. His name isn't Potter. Oh, did your dad say Potter's Field? Yeah. You know, and that that's a term for a mass grave. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, just hundreds of people have been killed on the property between Jonas and Rusty, you know, and all of them end up getting just just getting buried in shallow graves out here. Yeah. 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 Uh, Rico shows up. Uh, neat little bit from the art book. Rico was supposed to have some like Doc DNA in him. He mm-hmm. was supposed to be a cloning experiment, but yeah. they, it doesn't really come through. He doesn't look like Doc. Right. But he's supposed to kind of look a little bit like Doc. Yeah. I uh, hear as it stands, it's a little bit like a, uh, like a Dr. Moreau kind of thing. Uh, a little, yeah. little touch there. Yeah. A, a little more subtle than the later, like explicit Dr. Moreau episode they do this season, which <laughs> right. I think is a little bit of a bummer. Yeah. Um, the, uh, you know, he just, you know, he's, you're not a prisoner. He lets Dean go. He's like, I just want to see how you turned out because you could say I brought you into this world. Dun, dun, uh, dun, 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 dun. Uh, great cut. We cut over to Orpheus's room and it's a Cenobite room. Uh, blue fog. There are hooks everywhere. <laughs> the outrider doesn't have his skin. He's hung up on hooks through his shoulder <laughs> muscles. Up. And so is Tatiana. 
<laughs> like it's yeah, no big it's, deal. It's real, and of course, they're the sex yeah. wizards. You know? And then a Cenobite's like, so bit to desire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's a, you know right. just a, it, it is modeled after like the later cenobites in the uh in the uh uh commentary doc hammer is like oh i've, I've seen every hellraiser they're they're bullshit but he loves them yeah. right and you know yeah, yeah. Pr- pretty early on like as of hellraiser 3 they had cd the cd player cenobite or whatever <laughs> uh but the senate yep. the lead cenobite here is toaster face he says submit to submit to my to my toast my pleasure toast pleasure toast <laughs> and then a bread a bread slice shaped like brain just Red. flops yep just flops and slops out of this out of the slot uh on his face like down onto the floor it's so good it's very funny like th- this is this is the best joke in the episode for sure oh yeah uh just and also you just at a party and then just like somebody summons a xenobite that turns into this weird <laughs> snm like well, very good. So, like in the commentary, they talk about like, oh, I just I wanted to do, to do a whole Hellraiser episode, just like a whole Cinnabite mm. thing. Like, it's like, fuck yeah, do it. Uh, but uh, but yeah. in the uh, it, in the book, they're like, oh yeah, we just joked about that all t- all the time. Like, what a terrible party guest the Cenobites would be. <laughs> yeah, Cenobites are great. Oh yeah, I I just uh, man the, as a, as a a non specific noun <laughs> like being added to the world's vocabulary. I just uh, love that there are Cenobites. Yep. They're so good. <laughs> So uh, stupid. We didn't say this, but the Outrider was like up on a hook. Like his trick was like he 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 took a Rubik's oh, cube we, that is. We l- said. Did we? Yeah, yeah. yeah, he sol- he's, yeah. yeah he solves he solves the uh, the Rubik's cube, and you know that that is the equivalent of undoing the lament configuration, and uh, you know in this universe, and uh, everything goes back to normal, and everybody claps. Like nobody's horrified yeah. by what they've seen. It's except, just a stunt. Yeah. Well, except uh, for Orpheus. Yeah. Orpheus is like, I hope that you're not doing that kind of magic with my daughter in your home. <laughs> my daughter, because it's is, sexual. Yeah, which, which is like, goes, a blasphema. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's very good. It's a valid concern. I wouldn't want to have a Cena, yeah. Cena bite summoned into my daughter's house on the reg. Uh, Al says, you know, or Orpheus says, Al, it's not Al's turn. He steps out to get some air. He's vaguely unsatisfied. It's just yeah. important that he's not here for this because he's the the sensible one. Yes. And Al says, this has been real dumb. It's Halloween people. Let's raise some dead. Yeah. You know, let's get some zombies going. Mm-hmm. Um, mm. D, you know, Hank and Dermot are lying in the grass looking at the constellations. Um, this fart bit I really love. Mm-hmm. Uh, just like, dude, she's just SBD. Like, oh, yeah, I'm bacon brown. He's back here. Yeah. Uh, and uh, what just really well observed thing. I love Hank be like, ah, oh, it smells just like food. <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that is a really well observed yeah. foul fart observation. Yep. Where it's like, God, why does it smell kind of like a, a buffet? This is horrible. <laughs> kind of um, like a buffet, Jesus, Gary. <laughs> it does some like you've never like don't come on. No, no, don't, I don't play Captain Good for it to me. <laughs> no, like, no, I know what you happen. mean. I know your I guts. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. You just don't. You just don't talk about it. <laughs> I, I I felt this was very well observed. Teen yes activities here. I like showing Hank and Dermot being friends and showing why Hank might actually like Dermot. Uh huh. You know, them being kind of affectionate with each other. Anything that time they do that, I kind of like it. Yeah. Anything that's not just Dermot being Dermot and shitting on Hank, you know? Yeah. 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 Want a muffin? <laughs> Here you go. Oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> so yeah. gross. Oh, like, yuck. Yeah. Uh, so uh, we cut back in. Dean's hyperventilating because he's been told. He's been told, hey, yeah. you, you're, you're, you're a clone. Um, and he's laying out, you know, what you probably would feel like. I'm, I'm not the real Dean. I'm just some kind of, I'm just some kind of science experiment. Right. And, yeah. you know, ben, Ben's attitude is like, like he, he probably could be a little bit more understanding about what a big reveal this is, you know, cause like it, it, yeah. it was kept a secret. Like you knew it was being kept a secret and this was probably going to hit, but he also says, you know, like I was conceived in the backseat of a Packard. You were conceived in a tank. So what? I I, I, really, I literally like Ben's point yeah. during this. It's like, you're still Dean. Like you had a mom and dad. All that's mm-hmm. different is your dad found a way to keep you going back to life. Yeah. Dean says, this is wrong. He's like, if you want to know wrong, like hold your lifeless child in your arms. Yeah. If you, you know? if, if you had the ability to avoid that, you know, of just all, all other ethical considerations aside, you'd need to understand that that's where he was coming from with this. Yeah. It's really good. It's a good conversation. Yeah. You know, uh, not funny, just mm-hmm. interesting, you yeah. know, well, well conceived and well performed dialogue mm-hmm. uh, here. Um, the uh, this eerie light draws our attention outside. Um, corpses start emerging from the ground. 
uh, here. Uh, we Hank and and Derek, super fucking runaway, uh, which I love. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. Yeah. Uh, <sighs> And they're all converging on the house uh, like it's going to be a zombie apocalypse. But this light appears overhead, destroying them all, and it turns out to be Santa. Yeah. I like how Santa just straight up throws a spirit bomb. <laughs> yeah. This is very, very funny. Uh, <laughs> destroying all the corpses. Um, we cut back to Rusty. He looks out as uh, the kids, uh, the field, uh, you know, kids are dodging the lasers. And three of them make it to the door. Yeah. Uh, there. And they're just really happy to do it. You are the luckiest kids ever. <laughs> very cute yeah um santa goes to the brimstone assembly and it's the master and yeah. he's just like you you all know me i live in many of your closets and you dinks forced me out of the closet <laughs> and goes, you like, go girl and to the master without skipping a beat just says the right thing which is solidarity my brother like <laughs> i love it i love the master so much That's so good uh and the outrider asks, like hey like why 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 would you show up as santa on halloween and he's like hey there's really not the, like there isn't like a, a like a the halloween one Holly, halloween guy yeah there's no halloween yeah. goblin yeah um no. <laughs> and he says Oh, and of course, Dragoon calls him Satan, right? Uh, but uh, then he gets he gets slapped. He gets a sleep ray in return, you know. And and he, uh, the master upbraids man- Red Mantle for bringing a normal. I love that calling them a normal. Yeah, yep, yep. yeah. Uh, so the part you know, he's they, he's dissolving the party. They've lost the true meaning of Christmas, and that meaning is you shouldn't raise an army of the dead just because you can. Yes. Um, the trick or treaters ask Orpheus for some candy and he goes inside to get some more d'oeuvres. And, you know, he was, uh, it, he would have stopped this raising of the dead. He's mad. Yes. When he finds out this happens. Yeah. Uh, the master's like, you know, don't get crazy. They didn't know that daddy kept bullets in the gun. Yeah. They, they had, they you had know? no way of knowing it when they went to raise the dead that there was a mass grave, like, or you know, mass two, grave nearby. Yeah, 200 yards over. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's a sweet bit where uh, he's just like, you know, you're my best student, <laughs> you know, like, because he, he is, he's the one who wouldn't have done this shit. Yeah. You know, Orpheus is really the most sensible member of this crew of idiots. <laughs> he's not going to yeah. summon a Cenobite. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, then Orpheus, uh, well, Al apologizes saying, hey, I just got, I just got swept up, you know, and swept up in the spirit of Halloween. And Orpheus gives the big, you know, holiday special uh, kind of speech saying, you know, the, the spirit of Halloween isn't, isn't raising the dead. You know, it is about, you know, the true nature of this day is finding out who we really are. Do we dress up as our ideal selves or are we not yet ready to decide what we want to be? And this, yeah. I think, very smartly cuts over to Dean because he has just learned what he is, you know, or at least yes. one fact about who he is physically at this point. Yeah, yeah. it's very sweet. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not what I think Halloween is. Nope. <laughs> not by any means. Like I, yeah. this, this is a weird romantic. Halloween is when you get to walk by a bunch of cool yard decorations. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't think there's a real emotional core to Halloween. Yeah. Uh, I choose not to read up. <laughs> you know in, into that that yeah. much but it works for a tv special mm-hmm. you know um and he's, he says uh, halloween is the night we truly discover who we are yes um we get our post credits uh with hank joining dean up on the roof dean is moping you know, mm-hmm. where's dermot dermot's watching the halloween uh or the twilight zone halloween marathon yep. uh the november 1st that's very sweet yep i like that idea we don't see it but just him hanging out and watching mm-hmm. uh and dean is about to tell him you know we, he's like i learned something you know what'd you learn and he, and then dean decides he doesn't want to curse his brother with knowledge yeah you and know, so I, i'm very really sad knowing this mm-hmm. why would i inflict that on somebody yeah the moment when he does tell hank what they are is super mm-hmm. good when they finally do it yeah yeah Agreed. Um, but instead he, 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 he swerves and you know, because Ben gave him some of his beer, you know, or <laughs> earlier on to calm him down, he says, ah, oh, beer tastes like pee pee, which I've never had a beer that tastes like pee pee. I've never tasted, uh, yeah, I've be- never tasted pee pee. I've never had a beer that tastes like pee pee smells. Uh, yeah. Beer doesn't, I, I think I could also just take this as like beer is an acquired taste. It doesn't taste good. Yeah. When you're a kid. True. You know, like it, it just doesn't. Um, I, I snuck beer and I'm like, this is the grossest shit in the world. Why wouldn't, why would anyone ever drink this? Right. Right. And now I can, I can handle a beer. I enjoy mm-hmm. a beer from time to time. Um, horrible, uh, wiki stuff, fan wiki stuff. They're like, mm. maybe Dean actually knows this because Brock held his head down in a mix of pee in, uh, you know, Victor Echo November. And I'm like, fuck you. Do you, you don't need to ju- uh, justify you know, everything so literally. <laughs> yeah. Justify why somebody would, would know what pee tastes like. Yeah, yeah. Just the the, the TV tropesing of the world. Just like a thousand, 
million nerds trying to be technically correct and solve the equation that is media. Yeah. It's disgusting to me. Mm, I just, just think of these this planet and these people yeah. on it. Per 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 Sorry. Enough. Purge yourself like I, of, of the uh, of the instinct. Person. <laughs> purge yourself of the instinct to try and outsmart media would be my uh yeah. would be my uh suggestion. Yeah. I think uh, you know the, per, the, that purge is... yourself of the instinct to try to outsmart anything. Oh true. Yeah. You know, but, you're gonna die and it doesn't matter how smart you were. Mm-hmm. You know? Be nice and enjoy your life. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, and be, yeah. be nice. Like this episode is, this is, this is a sweet episode. You know, um, I, I, you know, I have a spot in my heart for heart for it, even if it is just for the, uh, for the Cenobite, uh, kind of sequence that is fucking yeah. inspired. Uh, like Ben and, and the Ben, the Ben dialogue, the, you know, like holding your lifeless child in your arms. Like it is yeah. cast sympathy on rust. Mm-hmm. Anytime that happens, I'm happy. Yeah. You know, and the cloning thing is always portrayed as like kind of evil and dumb. Right. Uh, but it's also like, he wouldn't have done that if he didn't love his kids. Right. <laughs> you know, he eventually it became rote because of course it did. Yeah. But you can imagine like what a cool thing that would have shown like the first time he did it mm-hmm. where he's legitimately like grieving his kids and then comes up with the idea. I'm kind of surprised they never did that in a flashback. Right. Right. You know? Like the casualness had to have been earned over repetition. It's one of those things we're going to see this with Spanakopita, the, this this episode. But like the show up until this point has not been terribly interested with uh, sympathizing with Rusty or trying to uh, give you a lot of you know like put a lot of pathos to what he to to, to what's what's going on with him. You know, like mm-hmm. he will say like yeah, Action Man would wake me up by pulling the trigger and whatever. But like that is all kind of explaining the trauma not really putting you not really giving you his point of view on why he is the way he is really you know yeah. and it's also played as a joke like even him describing the 16th birthday you know when uh when, when his dad used the shrink ray on his ding dong you know uh yeah like that like that that's that that's played for laughs uh and i think that like from you know kind of from the season forward they're a little bit more interested in having rusty be humanized yeah, uh, season four as well, like did some of that stuff. Season five is going to do even more. Yeah. You know, uh, and I like it. I like humanized Rusty. I want humanized characters. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't want complete monsters. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it's part of why, like part of my arc with the show, uh, talking about it on, on orb has been slowly falling out of love with the monarch mm-hmm. because he doesn't, he so rarely has that emotional core. Yeah to him even six and seven his arc kind of has a little bit of that but again it's much more plotty yeah um he's not a character with very much heart and i think you know i knew this going into the doing the podcast but like venture brothers is a show that works at its best when it has some heart yes you know the monarch is funny and there's some well-observed stuff in terms of relationships and everything but he's such a cartoon compared to everyone else on the show yeah you know um even 21 ends up being like a much more nuanced character yeah even if they do end up walking so much of it back yeah like toy like monarch is like the least developed character on the show yeah it's real weird that he ends up being the the secondary like almost a main character during season six and seven yeah especially seven Mm -hmm. um anyway we'll get to all that we will now uh thanks everybody for listening we appreciate you happy halloween let Mm -hmm. me be the first to wish you a happy halloween for 2022 <laughs> uh and uh yeah if you like the show go to patreon.com slash duck tv uh or leave us a rating review on apple podcast or podcast addict yeah uh spread the word tell your friends uh word of mouth is the only real way that we have to grow the show uh, and if you have thoughts about uh season five go ahead and go to duck tv slash contact click the orb button and send them in those will get compiled up uh at the uh the for the season wrap-up episode uh toward the mm-hmm. end there am i forgetting anything yeah Nope. Uh, that is it. Thanks for tuning in to Duckstream, assuming you did. Yeah. Have a happy holiday and have a good uh, 2022. Yeah. And until next time, go, go Team, team Venture. Venture. <laughs> <laughs>